Welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. What a wonderful melody, what a beautiful atmosphere of a sunny day or something calm or some happiness. <clears throat> this is Nocturno in F major, opus 15, number one, by Frédéric Chopin, of course. <laughs> the first part, of course, it's not the, the, the end. Here we are to open the next opus of Chopin's Nocturnus. After opus 9, where we had three Nocturnus, now in opus 15 we also will have three Nocturnus. Uh, so we can see that Chopin uh, is very generous. He composed three Nocturnus and put them together in one book. Um, of course, he was young, he was in Paris, he wanted to make a career, he wanted to get himself known in Paris salons. Uh, and this music was perfect for that, because, you know, all the young uh, ladies, daughters of aristocrats, uh, were in love with this kind of romantic music. And aristocrats also, so they invited Chopin, they also asked him to be a teacher of their kids and, um, and teenagers, kids. So for Chopin it was really important because to make a living in Paris, the capital, the cultural capital of Europe, where, in, where there were hundreds of fantastic musicians, it was really difficult. Uh, so it was also smart by Chopin, that we can also say. But <clears throat> let's leave that. Let's talk about the music. Um, the year 1833. So Chopin is 23 years old. Only 23 years old. Still working and building, working on and building his position in Paris. And he writes three nocturnos. And the dedication to these nocturnos is a son ami. Ferdinand Hiller, so to my friend Ferdinand Hiller. Ferdinand Hiller was a German composer uh, and piano pedagogue and a pianist. He was he he was he was a student of Hummel. He knew even got to know the Beethoven, and he was a friend of Chopin, Liszt, Berlioz, and many other great uh, artists of that times. And. Uh, what do we have here? If you know this Nocturno, you know that this Nocturno has a very easy construction A, B, A, when A is what I've just played for you, and B is a stormy, dramatic contrast. This is, this is the, 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 the surface, this is the general idea of this music. But you are here and I am here to go deeper. Uh, so let's leave this surface, everybody knows it, everybody knows that that's how it is. Now let's go deeper into the subject. First problem, the tempo. Chopin's tempo, because uh, I want you to know that Chopin wrote himself a tempo mark. Let's see what tempo Chopin writes. That's the tempo. So it's more or less the tempo how I play it. Right? Okay. Maybe you are used to <coughs> some recordings where pianists played slower. For example, uh, Arthur Rubinstein, he plays it very slow. If we play it slower... is very beautiful and theoretically we can play it slower but we have to realize that Chopin in his mind had a different tempo who knows maybe if Chopin uh, lived now maybe he would wrote it slower because to play it slower and play it beautifully we need a 
very good concert grand piano with a very long sound because what do we have here we have a beautiful singing like melody that we want to sing the melody that Chopin himself was saying that it should um, imitate the singing the singer uh, a song or an aria so this we have to have in mind when we have very long sound it is possible to play it slower but um, I personally as you know me maybe from my other videos I uh, love to respect what Chopin writes so if he had this in mind I also try to play it and then when I play it in his tempo I also understand the phrasing better because when we Mm, imitate the singer we have to feel like a singer we have to be a singer and what is special with the singer the special with the singer is that he needs to take a breath right the singer needs to breathe and if we play very slow then for the singer um, he has to take a breath we have to take a breath every two bars every short motif and this is it's not very good for this nocturno i think because then the the message is is changing but that's my personal opinion you everybody can have can has can have his own uh let's make a deeper analysis of this piece and let's start from the accompaniment so from the left hand when the accompaniment is a little special what kind of accompaniment we had before in the nocturnal number one we had a very typical nocturnal accompaniment like broken chords that made a shape of the chord right very romantic in the second uh, nocturnal also we had chords that made the, the full sound in the third a little waltz like but still it was a normal accompaniment now here we have something else and because of this what we hear what do we hear about here okay well now i emphasize for you one very interesting note time obsessively Chopin is repeating one note you know can you think about some other piece that Chopin is doing the same obsessively repeated one note and this piece is very famous and it has a title and this title comes from this note can you probably you can the middle part the same all the piece we have one note repeated raindrop prelude raindrop because of the rain and the drop of the rain all the time the same note. so I joke here that this nocturno should also be called a raindrop nocturno nobody called it like this but here I am to call it like this now uh, who knows maybe in the future it will get famous and it will be named a raindrop nocturno uh, it should <laughs> um, because of this one note that later in the middle part we also in have it in a little but in the middle part we have a storm it's not rain the rain becomes a storm how nice uh, how poetic also okay but so this is the but this is only one uh, layer of the accompaniment another layer of the accompaniment is the beautiful melody that we will also hear in the right hand so in the singer um, part this is also here
beautiful. So the left hand itself is beautiful. And this is because it is uh, like an accompanist, a pianist who is accompanying the singer. Now let's look at the melody um, of the the main um, singer, the, the right hand, because it is constructed in a very special way. It's not anymore Chopin from his first Nocturnos, when he is uh, constructing the phrases in a regular, regular way. Of course, when we are simply music lovers, um, we don't think about it when we listen. We just enjoy the beautiful melody. But now we are here, all we, of us, to get deeper, to get some more um, of what Chopin, how Chopin was constructing this. Because as we know from Chopin's work, he was not like Mozart or Schubert to write, simply write what he had inside. He was carefully shaping and working and thinking about every phrase. So what this genius is doing with this melody, let's listen. The first phrase is opening. It opens, right? It opens up and it uh, building up the energy. And then the second phrase is releasing the energy, just like breathe, uh, inhale, exhale, right? We breathe. Well, in fact, we can call it a one phrase. If we play it faster, this is one phrase, but uh, it consists of two um, motifs, longer motifs that we can call the question and the answer or whatever you like. Um, now, a very important thing, I want you to look at and listen to the rhythm of this melody. The rhythm is at the beginning nothing special. All notes are even and then we have the motif which is extremely important. Listen to this motif. Pam pa pam pam pam. This rhythm pam pa pam. I want you to remember uh, because it is extremely important in the whole nocturnal. Tam pa pam So okay, so the first the first uh, question is opening and then we release What what is going on next? We have the first phrase again with a little embellishment, a little make it, uh, Chopin is making it a little bit more beautiful. Instead of these notes, he is making this kind of bird-like, bird-like embellishment. And then the second motif, this motif, important motif, is not uh, changing. we had Chopin, uh, younger Chopin, he would have repeat uh, again. He would have repeated again the, this... Uh, but now Chopin starts to experiment with how to build phrases. So he is making something else. Instead of releasing energy, he's building it up even more, even higher. Listen. This is the end of the first phrase. And now even more higher. And then end, but it's not the end. Listen, instead of making the end, he is asking question with the melody. is opening the energy again and then Chopin repeats the second this I mean it's a third phrase the phrase um, with this 
high energy. And then what? Is it the end? Yes, but only for a moment, because then we have even higher. And finally, the end. But is it really the end? Ha. No, it's also the beginning. The beginning of what? Of phrase number one. And then it's cut, it's, it's cut suddenly, so we don't have this anymore, because it's cut. So if we play this uh, and we number these phrases, let's play it from the beginning. Phrase number one. something else. Like phrase number three. And now the ending, which opens. Phrase number three, repeat it. number one but now not full and finished and now the storm starts it's now look let's listen to a little to this storm <laughs> We are afraid. Do you know other piece where that Chopin is doing the same? Probably you know ballad number two, also in F major. You know. Well, after this fantastic, when we finish part A, suddenly without any preparation. We have the storm. So the same idea. Of course, ballad was written a little later. So from this nocturnal Chopin took the idea to make it uh, it's a little bit more to make it like a ballad. Here we have um, many uh, differences in this middle part. Uh, first of all, we have melody now in the left hand before we had in the right hand so in the right hand we have the accompaniment uh, so this is the difference of course the tempo is different because it's faster the dynamic is different because it's loud and also Chopin writes con fuoco which means with the fire so everything is different no there is also a lot of things that are the same. Maybe you don't believe me, but I, I will prove it for, to you. First of all, the way how these phrases are built. As you remember, the first phrase was open, opening, right? Here we have the same idea of building the phrase. Let's listen to the melody. And now, opens again. Again opens. And then what happens next? And then the right hand comes with. What 
is this? Yes, this is exactly this motif that we are actually missing because it was cut just before the storm. Uh, so this is the second thing which is similar. And the third thing which also is similar is the accompaniment. Believe it or not, but here when we have this one note, we repeat it. Now in the accompaniment of the right hand in the middle part, this is the accompaniment of the right hand. By the way, this accompaniment of the right hand is so difficult to play. Well, I don't have problems now, but I, I did practice it quite a lot of time. And um, But the good news, thing, the good, good news is that Chopin himself wrote some easier versions of this accompaniment in his students' notes, and we have them. You can find them in the edition, National, National Chopin edition, which I'm using. Ekir, uh, you can find them. If you play this piece and if it's too difficult for you, and if you want to play it still and uh, you want to play it a little easier, and this is blessed by Chopin himself, then uh, find this edition. If you cannot find this edition, just drop me a line um, below this video so I will send you a photo of it. Because it's worth it. It's worth it. Absolutely. This Nocturno is worth to play. And uh, for Chopin, it was no difference. The, what was for him important was the left hand. This was the, the important. How the right hand will play this was not so important. But, I mean, of course, it's in the easier versions, it still sounds the same. But what is very, what is actually the difficulty here? I show you. We have to play um, uh, first. Uh, we have to play with the thumb and the fourth this finger, two notes, and then immediately after with this finger and this finger another two notes, and like this, this and this, this and this, in a very fast tempo. So it's for the hand. It's extremely uncomfortable. Well, I found the way that I'm using my uh, the the whole uh, the whole hand forearm here and then it's easier for me if I try to play it only with fingers then it doesn't work um, anyway here we also have the repeated note so this is also similar so now what I want to say is that first of all I'm not making it up it's all in the score and Chopin was carefully thinking about it. And here we reveal the beauty and the genius of this piece, because the middle part, stormy part, which when we listen to it, we think, oh, it's completely different from what we've heard. It's not actually completely different because it's built on the same kind of ideas and not one or two, but on three ideas. And I must tell you that when I found out that this motif is here in the middle, and now in the piano, listen, right? So it seems like this motif in the stormy part is trying to calm down the storm, to calm down the drama. So, so it because it comes from the another world, right? So that's in a way we can think about it as a symbol. Maybe it's a symbol of the another world person from the first world to calm down the storm, or maybe this is the fight in the middle part. It's a fight between uh, this motif and the stormy part. Let's listen to the stormy part in its entirety, and let's focus on this two motif fight. And it 
But is it really? No. Again. <laughs> So this motif, I think, bring, it brings us to the part A, but I think it's very deep actually when we think about it, because this motif, this motif appears here in the middle part in two uh, has like two faces one face is still dramatic and another face is calming down maybe this motif is showing that it is possible to control our emotions when we get angry when we get mad where where there's something dramatic it's possible to calm it down there is a lot of poetry and a deeper philosophy in this piece, in my opinion. So, um, when you listen to it, I think it's worth to think about it. And well, when the part A comes back, nothing will really change. It's all the same. So let me now play for you the part A after the storm. And this is how we finish this, uh, sh uh, this video about this beautiful nocturno. Excuse me, one thing is actually changing. We don't hear it, but the pianist must respect it, because this is what Chopin wrote in the score, sotto voce. Sotto voce, he didn't write at first. This means uh, under the voice, so it means uh, that we just, we don't sing, but we are just singing in a very low, very silent voice. So this might be played, must be played a little more magic, more, more magic sound. As you can hear, I try very hard to imitate the singing, the singer. That's what Chopin wanted. And maybe before I finish this video, uh, let me tell you a few words about that. Because when we play Chopin music, Chopin's music, especially Nocturnos, we must try to make the piano sing, even if it's impossible because the piano has hammers inside, so in fact we hit the strings with the hammers. But there is, it is possible uh, to make an illusion of singing. And this is what uh, everybody who plays this nocturnos should work on at first place. Nocturnos are, and these are Chopin words, etudes. Etudes for legato, so for connecting the notes, for beautiful touch, for 
balance between left hand and right hand. They are extremely difficult and probably even more difficult than the real etudes, because to play Nocturno really spectacularly magic in a magic way, one needs to really work a lot on touch and all everything I told you. So uh, what I really mean when we start, we have to connect and adjust every note one to another. So when we start the next note, like in the singing, we have one line. Um, we cannot have this note separated from each other, especially when we open this first phrase here. Now I play for you in a wrong way, so just for you, so that you can feel the difference. When we have this, and now if we hear somebody play like this, and now. Notes are separated, pa, 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 like this. This is wrongly played. It's of course not easy, but must be as smooth as singing. This second, this second phrase is difficult. Now I also made a mistake in the second note, it because my finger just uh, dropped. So listen again. Like this. So this theme, this topic, I mean, this topic is for another video, definitely. But I just wanted to um, show you a little bit of what the pianist um, should work on when um, he or she is working on Chopin Nocturnus. Singing, singing, singing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I invite you to watch my other videos uh, that I did uh, before and all my future videos that I'm going to publish soon. The next one will be the second Nocturno from Opus 15, the beautiful, absolutely wonderful uh, F sharp major. One of my favorite Nocturnos. This is just the teaser. Oh my God, it's so nice. I just can't wait to uh, share with you my interpretation and my analysis of this masterpiece. See you soon. Bye bye.